Hi, my name is Daniel Knight, and I am a member of the DeRosa Lab at Carleton University in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. And today, my team and I are here to present a lab training module on the use of lateral flow assays. LFAs are paper-based trip tests designed to signal the presence of an analyte. As shown below, they commonly consist of four components, a sample pad, conjugate pad, nitrocellulose membrane, and absorption pad. The sample pad is where the sample or specimen is introduced and often contains a series of buffers or other solutions to make the sample suitable for detection. Next, the sample will migrate to the conjugate pad containing the detector particles. In our work, this pad contains aptamer-coated gold nanoparticles that are specific for the analyte of interest. The contents of the conjugate pad, along with the analyte if present, will then migrate up the assay along the nitrocellulose membrane through capillary action. Any excess sample is then absorbed by the absorption pad at the end of the strip. As the assay is run, the aptamer will be captured at the test line by immobilized tryptavidin molecules through strong interactions with the biotin group covalently linked to the end of the aptamer. The gold nanoparticles are captured at the control line by PDDA, a positively charged polymer, to signal if the test was run properly. In our work, lateral flow assays have been produced for a variety of targets, including mycotoxins, viruses, small molecules, and whole proteins. These have a number of applications in fields such as food safety and medicine. LFAs are of particular interest because of their distinct advantages over alternative detection assays. They are often associated with low manufacturing costs, ease of scaling up for manufacturing, limited operator training requirements, and shorter analysis times. In the DeRosa lab, we use synthetic molecular recognition agents known as aptamers in our LFAs as opposed to antibodies. Aptamers are single-stranded oligonucleotides made of DNA or RNA that bind to their targets through a variety of intermolecular interactions such as hydrogen bonding, van der Waals forces, and electrostatic interactions. They're selected for their targets in a process known as SELEX, the Systematic Evolution of Ligands by Exponential Enrichment. Over antibodies, aptamers have a number of advantages including high specificity and selectivity for their targets, easy chemical modifications, extended stability, and low cost. In the DeRosa group, aptamers have been used as drug delivery vehicles for lateral flow assays, in smart fertilizers, and as contrast agents for MRI and CT imaging. Below is a schematic showing the mechanism of action for aptamer-mediated LFAs in the presence of target. First, the biotin-labeled aptamer and gold nanoparticles are incubated, and the aptamers passivate the nanoparticle surface. Gold nanoparticles are frequently used in the adsorption-desorption method of LFAs because of their optical phenomenon known as localized surface plasmon resonance, or LSPR, that gives them a distinct dark red color. Upon the addition of target, the aptamer preferentially binds the target and desorbs from the nanoparticle surface. On a strip, the presence of target translates to the absence of a signal at the test line. Since the aptamers are no longer passivated to the nanoparticle surface, the aptamer target complex is captured at the test line by immobilized streptavidin molecules, so no colored signal appears. The PDDA polymer at the control line will still give a colored signal to indicate the test was run successfully. In the case of no target, the aptamer will remain passivated to the nanoparticle surface. On the strip, the aptamer nanoparticle complex will be captured at the test line, and as a result of the sustained aptamer passivation, will result in a colored signal. Lateral flow tests are two types. One is sandwich assay, and another method is competitive assay. In DeRosa lab, we are working competitive lateral flow assay for small molecules detection. This is the biodot dispenser unit for small scale design for research purpose. We need air source at constant pressure to the instrument. Before printing, we need to fix the dispensing parameters such as volume of the dispensing solution, line width. If you want repeatability, need to edit and save the data. The test solutions such as streptavidin and pololin filled into this glass border that is apt as a capturing reagent. The control solutions like PDDA polymer, sucrose or BSA filled into this glass water. This are the two syringe pumps, one for test and another for control solutions. Now 
the test and control solution dispensing on the nitrocellulose membrane. Nitrocellulose membrane characterized by the capillary flow time depends upon the sample. We need to select the membrane specification. Our batch were cut into strips of 5 mm using a paper cutter. Then placed on a plastic adhesive packing. The strip assembled manually inside the cassette which is the device that holds the test strips. The sample solutions contained a mixture of biotin labeled aptamer and gold nanoparticles in the presence and absence of target. The samples were applied to the strip. The solution migrated along the membrane. The result shows no red color at the test zone indicated the target presence while red color at the test zone indicated that absence of target. The color developed inversely proportional to the concentration of the target. The peak area can be analyzed using image software or ladder flow assay reader. The image on the right shows the LFA highlighted from the previous clip. The presence of target resulted in aptamer desorption from the nanoparticle surface, leaving no colored signal at the test zone. In contrast, the absence of target on the right resulted in sustained aptamer passivation and the entire aptamer nanoparticle complex being captured at the test line to produce a colored signal. On behalf of our team members involved in building this video, we'd like to thank the NSERC Promote program for this wonderful opportunity, our amazing supervisor, Dr. Maria DeRosa, and the members of the DeRosa Lab, as well as Carleton University. Thanks for watching.